producer come together on the same platform, you get tabs. Have I got a guest for you this week on this edition of The Author Speaks. We're going to go up close and personal with none other than Dr. Juno Robbins. And we're going to hear about his book, this phenomenal, and how it's getting into the homes and lives of parents and individuals. And guess what? It's not even being distributed by an independent distributor other than himself. You know how Vicki Winan says she's the hardest working woman in the industry? It's some other folks that are working real, real hard, too. The author speaks, and we'll be right back. David Stanley, I just want to thank you for buying my comic book. I really enjoyed putting things together, but you know it was a lot of hard work. I think it was worth it. I hope you like my theme song. Many thanks to Just Live for lending their talent. There's a war going on, but some boys is here, the mighty immortals. They taking over this year. So stand clear, no worries, no fear, and no drama can stop us when the Almighty is near. Just try me, it's clear. And the voice that you hear is the sounds of many waters in your ear. And this here is the theme song To show your cats how we roll and that the team's strong The message, look deep beside the folds Read and understand my plans The mighty immortals right in the palm of your hands Well, we're back the author speaks. As I mentioned in the opening, this edition, our guest is none other than Dr. Juno Robbins. And we're going to go up close and personal, exploring the challenges, his achievements in writing his book. But here's something very special about this particular publication, and you'll hear it from him. This was a collaborative effort between a father and a son, and you're going to hear all about it. Welcome to the office. Thank you for having me. And you know what? We're here at the Bean Scene. We are broadcasting right in the community of the north side, the urban area of the Twin Cities. Although the broadcast can be viewed and heard throughout the United States and abroad, but we bring you right to the Bean Scene. It's very important that you know what our business is are doing while the bean sit. What better setting as a backdrop to introduce to you the latest books as well as the flights of film producers, playwrights. You've heard it all right here. Let's get right to business. Dr. Juno, this is my pleasure. First of all, I want you, before we even get into the book, you just got back from Florida. We did. Oh, so you messing with me. You messing. This is Minnesota. And you know what? You made a comment. You said you make it a point to always get your way. That's right. Tell us about that. I love your your, your sayings on Facebook. Oh, because there's you. always something leisure oriented. If you don't have your health, you don't have much. Right? So we were in Florida, we got back, and regardless of how much we travel, no matter where we go, we're going to take our time to get our six, seven, eight hours of sleep. And if you're not being healthy and if you're not taking care of yourself, you can't help other people. And we love to help other people. You made the mention of we. Let's talk about that we, that partner in your life. Go ahead and talk about it. Of my wife, Anika Robbins. Uh, of and that years. name is, is, is quite familiar to a lot of people. Anika's name is her brand. She is a brand. She owns a couple of companies, uh, Anika International Cosmetics, which is a, a makeup line that she owns and distributes. And then Anika and Friends, which is um, basically an event planning organization. And that's my sweetheart. We've been together, just had our 11 year anniversary, and, and life is good. Thank you. So you're traveling all over. Where have the two of you been? Take us there for a minute. <laughs> well, let's see. A couple of summers ago, we went to um, Europe. It's been our biggest trip. And we toured six or seven countries in Europe. Spent a lot of time in uh, the Caribbean, spent a lot of time down south in Florida. No wonder you look great. <laughs> Um, Florida, we're debating 
purchasing a place down there actually so we're going to be a, a dual dual city family we'll keep a place in Florida keep a place up here when it gets cold in, in Minnesota like these 21, 22 uh, degree days we'll be down in Fort Lauderdale that's outstanding well you heard it on the author speaks as I mentioned up close and personal no you're not going to lose Dr. Juno in the Twin Cities he's just making it available to you to go ahead and travel so that while you're in Florida you can make sure that whatever care he's providing you with you get it there am I correct? that's correct <laughs> tell us about your business your career well, by a trade, I'm a chiropractor. I own a business called Cultural Chiropractic North over here in North Minneapolis, 39th and Thomas. Um, been doing chiropractic for 13 years now. And uh, we've had three clinics, sold two, just have the one left. Chiropractic has told us to health care. So no drugs, no surgery, leaving the body's own ability to heal itself. We just kind of move along its way. You know, of course, even in business, we know that that can be stressful. True. Who takes care of you? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're a wellness-oriented clinic, so we have a couple of massage therapists on staff. We do uh, nutrition and supplements as well, and I have a couple of other chiropractors as well. So just as we preach and, and treat our patients, everybody within our clinic gets treated on the same wellness principles. You know, this is special because Dr. Juno is also a friend of Your Grace Media Network that is, and, and TAS, the author speaks, is a broadcast program of Grace Media Network. He's also, we have a very special person that we want to send a shout out to, and that's Desmond Calloway. Desmond Calloway. Desmond, oh my goodness, Desmond is in the Marines. Oh yes. my goodness, you know, uh, being female, that kind of touched my heart. But I understand purpose. Yes. I understand purpose. And there's such a phenomenal thing on his life that we want him to go as far as he can go. Yes. All right, you are a book author. You have published 121 Tips on Raising a Child of Color. I've read this book. And I love it. I really do. We bring folks to the table that, as I say, I eat from the best tables. So I'm going to bring to you that that I've tasted of, whether it maybe was an excerpt. I'm one of those kind of book readers that when the book really has me, I look at the tape type table of contents. Sure. And I read that book based upon what I'm needing. Now, that may be kind of a weird way to do it, but I end up going from front to back. But I love it because if I do it that way, and it's an easy read, it meets my need, and I'm able to take that tip and run with it right then and there. Sure. How did this book come about? Well, it's, uh, I'm the co-author with my father, uh, Larry Mansfield Robbins, and my father, I'm just so proud of him. You know, he never knew his father. He lost his mother at an early age, but he developed into the kind of father that everybody would want as a father. And even in the community we're from in Canada, he's, I call him the Canadian Bill Cosby. He's that father figure from the, the Huxtables, so to speak. And we're sitting around one day just talking about raising a child and parenting tips. And he told me what worked, and I told him what I thought wasn't so great. And we put all these ideas down on paper. And we said, hey, this is actually a book. And then what we tried to do is put it into little snippets where on one page you'd have a, a parenting tip, you know, just one or two sentences. The next page would be a self-introspective parenting question. Am I really doing this to the best of my ability in the raising of my child? And it's kind of a, a philosophical, uh, self-motivational type book that parents love. But yet such an easy, easy read. Is there such a thing as your favorite saying in here or your favorite tip? And there are literally 121 tips. <laughs> exactly. Um, do I have a particular favorite? Not necessarily. But if you just kind of scroll through, and the universe will kind of tell you what you need, like you that's said. That's right. That's and right. the way we designed the book, you take it, and you just do one trip, one tip a day, and focus on that tip and, and apply that. For example, tip number 55, which I just opened to, repetition is the creator of character. Often repeated thoughts will become the essence of your child. That is the tip. Next page over, what are three positive thoughts my child should think frequently? So they become thoughts of habit. Flip to another page. Children learn faster, better, and more accurately under spirit of approval versus the spirits of abuse and blame. Next page, what kind of environment do I promote for my child as they learn about the ways of the world? 
You were mentioning that you and your father, this was a collaborative effort. Right. Let's talk about a little bit more. Let's delve into that. Maybe some of the things that your dad wouldn't want you to tell us but yeah. as you were working. Because, I mean, these are two genius minds collaborating. This is a son giving his perspective and a father rendering his final setting. Exactly. <laughs> tell us about how that worked out. And I'll tell you where I'm going. Far too long. Have we been denied of our gift? And what I mean by that, we have to sometimes submit to elders. And we're living in a, a state now where I think that's what's missing. And if we can be, bring reverence back to our elders, yes. I believe that the wealth and the wisdom coupled with the ingenuity, our youthfulness, and our technology now, being right. in the 21st century, I believe that we will counter some flaws and some discord and some shortcomings of our people. Right. So help us look at how this came about with you and your father working on this project. That's actually a great way to put it. And one of the tips in here is to respect the wisdom of the elders. And the corresponding question is, what elders do I know that I'm able to tap their wisdom of? But as you said, respecting the elders, number one, and kind of bridging that with current technology. So for example, most of the wisdom in this book, you know, is in my father's head. What do I have the ability to do is put the words together and bring it into the 21st century media. And we collaborate. And it's the first book of its kind. Uh, we did our first publishing actually back in 2001. Okay. Uh, first book of its kind written by a father-son combination of color. And it was just beautiful to see two black males collaborate on a family type book you know, and be able to go to the borders and the barns and open. We've had it in all these places for the initial couple of years. You know, again, now it's just marketed directly through our publishing firm, which is Urban Child Publishing. Um, I'm not sure if I answered your question or not. But well, we were talking, you, you did. You were talking about that, I was talking about that reverence of elders. Right. But then we want to go a little bit closer in. You're the son. You had your ideas about how this should flow. Where was, do you, can you recall a, um, a fork in the road, an impasse. <laughs> well, ultimately, um, father has the final say. <laughs> but one thing my father is very good at is looking at a myriad of approaches for a solution. There's always multiple solutions for any problem, mm -hmm. right? And people can't get stuck on, hey, my way is the only way, and, and that's all that there is. You know, when that happens, you're not going to get the, the ultimate result that you want. Now, you know, you're, you're, you're talking, you're talking to a community that's wisdom. Because I can't do this all alone. And when I open up the table and bring others to the table, I've got to be willing to listen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Give us some insight further because you are a young businessman. You are a professional. You are a book author. You didn't just get here. Let me cut through the chase. You didn't get here by being stuck on stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, in a nutshell, you need to be open to the teachings and you need to, nobody wants success, nobody will want success for you more than you can want it for yourself, okay? Go ahead and talk to that kid. Anything you do in life, somebody has essentially already done, you don't need to reinvent the wheel, right? All you need to do is take an example that has worked and kind of tweak it toward your particular flavor, your particular neighborhood, your particular style, and go with that template. Okay, and a lot of the success that we've had, you know, has always been priority related. We're here in North Minneapolis. It's it's our Minneapolis. It's our area, of Minneapolis. We could have been gone from North Minneapolis uh, years ago. We live in North Minneapolis. My job is in North Minneapolis, and North Minneapolis needs role models. And I'm not necessarily a public figure that's out there. I'm not a politician, but people know where I'm at in the neighborhood, and people will bring their their sons by. The teenage kids will come and spend a day in my clinic and say, "Hey, here's somebody who looks like me." Who's doing relatively well? I can do that, okay. and that feels good. And you know that whole quality of life is more important than quantity. And if you take care of you take care of your community, and if you're a good person, for the most part, you're going to do okay for yourself. All right, all right. Now, this book. Did you have any idea? We talked a little bit before. 
make sure that I was following the flow and not to lose out anything. Not only on task, the author speaks, do you get the author's perspective, challenges, insight on how they came about doing the book. But guess what? Right here, you also hear about their future and what's coming as well as what they ventured into. You are. You also have another book. Wait, before we get there, you have awards. You were voted. Uh, 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 is it a vote? It's awarded. It? Awarded. awarded. Doctor, I'm sorry, Chiropractor of the Year in 2000. It would be 2007. 2007. Right. So we're not talking about a novice. This is somebody that his peers have a say in what's going on here. Also, he is now Vice President of the American Black Chiropractor Association. That took place in the spring of 2009. So your influence is far reaching, far reaching. Your influence has something to do with how healthy I maintain my life, how healthy I think because of this book, and now influencing associations and those in organizations too. Maybe challenging them to go beyond what they're doing. Right. So hats off to you. Thank you. Hats off to you. I remember doing, uh, making sure that that press release was released through Grace Media. Right. But who would have thought that we'd have the opportunity, but we caught it today, to have you on the author speaks. Thank you. In Living Color. 121 tips on raising a child of color. Now, that set the stage for where we're going now. You are getting ready to release to the public very soon coming 121 health tips. Just, you've been waiting on this. Let's talk about that project. Oh, sure, 121 health tips for, for people of color. And one of the debates we always have, you know, what's really to go the whole for people of color for our community versus just a general book. And the fact is that people relate most comfortably to that which is familiar to them. And we just get a ton of patients in our clinic every single day. And the majority of their problems are lifestyle related problems. So I'm a chiropractor, we get a lot of musculoskeletal problems. People come in because of back pain or sprain ankles, those kind of things. But there's the underlying obesity or diabetes or cardiovascular or all these different kind of health epidemics in our community and they're lifestyle related. By that I mean it's the things that we eat. It's the lack of exercise, it's the extremely high levels of stress, it's not knowing how to shop when you shop for groceries and buying a lot of processed foods that are high in the, the salt content, the processed, processed content, and it's really just taking away our health, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So I just felt it was so necessary, that's my profession, and you know, we get out here, we speak, we write, we do these book signings, get a message that, hey, you are ultimately responsible for your health. We have the health bill that's trying to get through right now. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Honestly, we need to get out of the mindset that somebody else is responsible for taking care of my health and I can do whatever I want at this time and then let somebody else worry about it in the future. That's not the way it should work. That's right. And that's what I love about the mindset of the current presidential administration. Barack Obama, President Barack Obama is saying, I can't do this all by myself. Yes. I didn't get into office by myself, so why would I change the script and administrate any policies and changes in moving this country forward? Um, the government didn't get in that situation by itself. Right. They're not going to get out of it by themselves. Right. We the people. So we have this opportunity. And we have, uh, yes, we have the power to change. Uh, we watched a movie last night. It's called Food Inc. If anybody has ever seen it. If you haven't seen it, great movie. It talks about the whole food industry and how three or four multinational companies basically control it. Right? But those multinational companies will do whatever the public dictates them to do by the purchases that the public makes. It's fantastic. And that's a, if you would ever have me back and like to talk about health care and wellness and, and self-responsibility for wellness, I'm here. Did he say, will we have him back? <laughs> Absolutely. As a matter of fact, we're going to announce right here, Dr. Juno is going to be joining us on another broadcast of your Grace Media Network. 
aside from The Author Speaks. But he'll be joining us on the morning show, 7 a.m. to 9 o'clock. So in that hour, we'll make sure you know, I think we talked about the 8 to 9 o'clock hour. He will be on the air, and he'll be talking about these health tips. <laughs> you know, I love this. This is exciting because you are allowing your voice to reach the nations. Thank you. Reach the nations. So I want you to be watching for 121 tips, health tips. Right. Let's say the name right. Let's get it right. 121 health tips for people of color. All right. Now, will that be a collaborative effort? Will your dad have any say in that book? <laughs> well, my father will have the first uh, first copy to read. You know, I might, I might actually collaborate with another doctor or two okay. on it. That's not quite decided yet. Oh. So. As we always say, now you're listening to The Author Speaks on your GMNlive.com. We are broadcasting from the host site of the Bean Sea, best coffee in the nation as far as I'm concerned. Now, I'm a tea connoisseur, so any, what is it, um, Sarita, I'm sorry, Sh Shalia, Shalia, <laughs> correct if I get the name right. Shalia, you all have how many different teas? How many different teas? It's got to be 10 different teas. And we can actually order our tea. I make sure that they know exactly what I like and they do it just right for me, especially after talking so much. But it's right. an outstanding facility to come in and just relax and enjoy. Right. As I always say on The Author Speaks, right here, The Author always has the last word. So as we wrap up this segment, this edition of The Author Speaks with Dr. Juno Robbins, the author has the last say. Whatever you want the community and the nations to know. Uh, I'd actually like to read the uh, dedication, the first sentence in the book of the 121 tips on raising a child of color. And it says, within the mindset and dedication of the child's guardian lies the rise or fall of a nation. And that was one of my favorite quotes from the book. That's why we put it straight up front. And it basically means that us as parents, or we as parents, or guardians, or anybody who is influential in the life of a child, it's how you carry yourself and your mindset and what you convey and conduct over that child is really going to dictate how that child lives their life. And that better is our community. Thank you.